Today we'll be doing Beach Burial by Kate Slezo. What I'd like you to do is please make sure you have your poem while watching this and listening and annotate your poem and make sure you bring that to our next lesson. I thought I would start this video by reading the poem to you first. Beach Burial Softly and humbly to the Gulf of Arabs the convoys of dead sailors come. At night they sway and wander in the waters far and under, but morning rolls them in the foam. Between the sob and clubbing of the gunfire, someone, it seems, has time for this, to pluck them from the shallows and bury them in burrows and tread the sand upon their nakedness. And each cross the driven stake of tidewood bears the last signature of men, Written with such perplexity, with such bewildered pity, the words choke as they begin. Unknown seamen, the ghostly pencil wavers and fades, the purple drips, the breath of wet season has washed their inscriptions, as blue as drowned man's lips. Dead seamen, gone in search of the same landfall, whether as enemies they fought, or ford with us, or neither, the sand joins them together, enlisted on the other front. El Alamin. Okay, so that was the poem. Uh, so let's get this started. Alright, so Slezo himself, he was a war correspondent at the time, and he was really quite moved by the events. Uh, his poem is an argument against war, again, having to do with the dehumanization uh, the uselessness of war. Uh, yeah, uh, the themes. So we got the death, the transient nature of life, the sadness of the youth losing their lives, and the despondence of war. So again, you know, these young men just dying for no real apparent reason. An elegy. So laminates for the dead soldiers, the beach burial. Again, this is also a paradox as well, because when we think of Beaches, it's a pleasant thing to think of. And then we're saying beach burial. It's really quite conflicting. Softly and humbling. Tone is calm, somber and sad. And so we're getting an idea that this isn't going to be a particularly happy poem. Uh, the convoys of dead sailors. So a convoy is just a group of ships that are accompanied by an escort for protection, which is kind of ironic because they are already dead, so it's not much you need protection for, is there? Uh, present tense we're using here as well, or he was using anyway, uh, suggests that it is continuous and the first two lines it establishes it's going to be a a grave atmosphere. It's going to be quite depressing. At night they sway and wander in waters far under. Scene is orally recreated through alliteration and assonance. Rhythm is like waves lapping. Throughout this poem, there's just too much for me to individually highlight. So you'll have to do that yourselves. The assonance and alliteration within this poem. Uh, but morning rolls them in the foam, so imagery, you know, rolls them, so these dead bodies in the foam. And they're you know, quite powerless because they can't control what they're doing. Okay? And again, we're using the uh, personal pronoun them and suggesting anonymity. Between the sob and clubbing, so we've got animatopoeia, effective imagery, very uh, quite violent here of the gunfire. Someone anonymous uh, to pluck them from the shallows. It was quite quick and forceful, so they have to be quick while doing this. Probably you know, avoiding being killed themselves and bury them in burrows. So this is what I was saying here: these personal pronouns, which are impersonal. Okay. Uh, their burial is quite crude and makeshift. Mm. And tread the sand upon their nakedness. This idea of nakedness is a metaphor to suggest how they're just or very vulnerable. Not necessarily naked, 
but they are as they have passed and they've got no control of what is they're trying to do. Okay. And each cross the driven stake of tie wood, so symbolic of the violence that ended their lives. And it's just this wood, you know, it's been washed to shore. You know, each cross, so the idea is also uh, Christianity and how we uh, signify that somebody is, is deceased where they are. Uh, bears the signature of men. So here, all men are equal, regardless of whoever you may be. Written with such perplexity, with such bewildered pity. So repetition. Repetition is the incomprehensible of the situation. Futile waste of life. With such perplexity. And with such bewildered. She just doesn't understand. And the words choke. Yeah. Onomatopoeia. They're here with the, uh, the hyphen here. So his inability to continue. It, it hurts. It hurts to talk. It's too hard for him. And we can see... Through his poem, he's creating this melancholic atmosphere. Unknown semen, so they have no identity, no one's indiv no individuality. Ghostly pencil, so personification. That's the water effects on the pencil. So as time and weather gently um, erodes their names, I guess ero um, eroding. Erasing them from history as well, you could argue. Wavers and fades the purple drips. So highlights the dehumanization of war. You know, and this, this creative, sorry, creates this negative connotation. The breath of wet season. So we have this personification. And weather also is something that signifies a life cycle. You know, changing of the weather. Uh, as blue as drowned man lips, men's lips. So similarly, it's intended to shock the reader. The ink is like the the men's appearance. Right? So that's also what he was trying trying to do in his poem. He's trying to shock you. He uses a lot of uh, words that sound quite soft, and it's and it's just lulling the reader into this false sense of security, where their meanings are actually. It's quite deep. Dead seamen gone in search of the same landfall. So that's that's the land that they were initially trying you know, to get. Um, whether as enemies they fought, so dead soldiers on both sides, or fought with us, neither the sand joins them together, enlisted on the other front. This here is suggesting how they're all, um, <clears throat> regardless of who they are, you know, they're all equal when they when when they're dead, really. Uh, so it's ironic when you consider the attitude of war and expectations of soldiers to uphold the cause for which they are fighting. So they're all fighting for this particular land, and however, in the end, they all kind of just you know, get it equally. And El Alamein. So this was a battle in World War Two in the Middle East, located in the Arabian Gulf. Uh, this was the place where the Germans first had had their first loss. And uh, Winston Churchill is quoted as saying, "Before this particular battle, we had never had a victory. Then after this battle, that we never had a loss, something like that." So. This poem is quite clearly a poem about war and how it dehumanizes people and it's just it doesn't achieve anything you know young men dying how does that help anybody in the grand scheme of things uh, and also it, it contrasts with typical war poetry where it glamorize and we have this heroic notion of people, you know, dying for a worthy cause, whereas our poet here, he's arguing against that. He demonstrates that there is no cause worthy of this. Um, 
And uh, I think we'll leave it at that today, guys. So please annotate your poem and make sure you bring it to class. <laughs>